In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The Bible starts almost like a poem of doctrine, with a praise to the God of the creation who makes the visible world come into being through his word and deed. In this, the author of the Genesis adopts already existing traditional narrations of the creation, and the individual segments are only later sorted into the pattern of one week and called day. This is the reason for the erroneous belief that God created the world in six days. The word day in this context means time, context of time in which God creates, lets emerge, divides and imposes order, finally naming everything, for giving names is the Lord's prerogative. Anything that is created is subject to his rule. Thus, the universe, the cosmoses are made, forms develop, and order emerges from the chaos during those early times. In his Confessions, Aurelius Augustinus asks this God of creation, How did you make heaven and earth, and which tools did you use to complete your grand work? Because you had nothing in your hand you could have used to make heaven and earth. For where should you have taken it from? Something you did not make yourself to create something is there any being outside your being? Therefore you spoke, and it was. You created it in your word. Albeit science can already explain the when and how of creation, the reason, the purpose, and the why is beyond it. This is the task and the mission of those who see and experience God in everything that is, who do not accept the accidental and arbitrary character of events, but instead regard that which became and is an expression of God's ordering spirit and effect. Augustine says, There is no creator more sublime than God, no creative power more effective than God's word. According to Jewish and Christian tradition, the angels are the only ones to experience the beginning of time, the creation of new worlds through God's word. As the creatures made first, before anything else that was made, they are a part of this magnificent work. In Joseph Haydn's Oratorio, The Creation, the biblical text about the creation of the world is assigned to the part of the heavenly hosts. Uriel, one of the seven angels of the throne in Jewish tradition, standing before God, the one whose name means fire of God, raises his voice. Now the gray shadows of black darkness disappeared before the holy rays. The first day came into being. And God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the expanse and separated the water under the expanse from the water above it, and it was so. God called the expanse sky, and there was evening, and there was morning, the second day.
In the old world view, people imagine the expanse of the sky as a solid separating wall, keeping the water above the sky from the water under the sky. People at that time thought that when it rained, the floodgates of heaven opened. And thus, Ambrosius of Milan yet quotes the psalmist, Praise him, you sky of skies, and the water above the skies praise the name of the Lord. Was not the further advice directed at you, the denier? For he spoke, and they were there. He commanded, and they were made. He puts them there forever and for all eternity. He set the law, and it will not end. Today, we are able to explain and understand very many events in nature with the different methods of science and research. We are not in contrast to the rich imagery of the course of creation preserved in the Bible. Instead, we enter the individual areas of creation with our thought and reason, and thus, eventually, fulfill a destiny and will God has given us, as a part of the freedom He granted us. And therefore, Basil the Great quotes from Paul's letter to the Romans, God, who made that which is great, may give you in all the knowledge of his truth so that you may recognize the invisible from that which is visible. For what is invisible in him has been recognized and seen through his works since the creation of the world. So that earth, air, sky, water, night and day, as well as everything that is visible, will openly remind us of our benefactor. Humanity has joined into this praise of creation for several millennia, in different forms, in many languages. Regardless of whether poor or rich, educated or uneducated, strong or weak, they all come to give praise, consciously or unconsciously, agreeing or disagreeing, together with the people of all times, even those created long before us, join this song of praise. In Haydn's creation, Gabriel, another one of God's angels of the throne, whose name means power of God, raises his voice. Astonished, the happy throng of heaven's population beholds this wondrous work, and loudly from the top of their voice sounds the praise of the Creator, the praise of the second day. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kind. And it was so. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening. And there was morning. The third day.